Okay there. So we're going to make a start now. Welcome and good morning to the Nescott College Higher Education Induction. We're here on site and we're really pleased to have those of you able to join us here today um, come along. But I firstly need to mention that this will be recorded and there will be a link for people to access and revisit this if they need to after the event. Um, equally for students who are starting at different dates and times, I will be delivering this um, again, but again, anybody who joins can always revisit this. Okay. We will keep an eye on the chat um, and any questions that we see in that, and I will try to deal with those towards the end of the presentation. So the order of business today is an initial overview and welcome from myself, uh, Nikki Adams, Director of Higher Education, and I'm flanked by my two sort of key members of staff who I will introduce um, properly a little bit later in the context of their roles and how that involves them with you. And then following my presentation, there will be uh, the safeguarding and prevent presentation from Rob Greening and Amy Norris. Then there will be a short break and then we will have the team from the LRC, the Learning Resources Centre, which deals with information skills and academic um, study skills alongside that presenting and then there will be a slightly longer break prior to program specific uh, presentations from the University of Greenwich and uh, for Pearson programs and I will outline which programs fall into which category. Um, similarly the Open University programs as the invitation might have mentioned will have briefings within their subject um, and course start dates. So I will outline which programmes fall into which category when we get to the end. Okay, so very, very welcome. We're so pleased that you're able to join us today, but more importantly, to join us on the courses that you've elected to sign up to as part of your educational journey. Our aims and expectations are really to make sure that at the end of your time with us, you are employable, more innovative than you already are, because I'm not doubting that you already are innovative, professional, entrepreneurial, and basically ready to take those next steps in whatever capacity that might be. And that may involve continuing in your higher education journey, either at Nescot or somewhere else. So just to introduce a few key people, we have Francis Rutter, who is our principal and CEO, and then underpinning the work that we do across the college, we have Julia Snellock, who is sat here, who is the Senior Quality Administrator, and you will be receiving communications from Julia around a lot of student voice activity, which is absolutely at the heart of what we do. We need to know from you how we're doing, and how we might change things. And I'll touch on that again a little bit later. So Julie is very central in that. And then to my left, we have Naomi Williams, who is the head of academic standards, which is in effect the registry function. Um, and Naomi works with you and your course teams and program leads to make sure that there's a full understanding of policies, and um, procedures as they might apply to you, particularly around assessment practice. And then there's me, Nikki Adams, Director of Higher Education. So effectively all higher education falls under my auspices and I, I look after higher education across the college, irrespective of whichever subject area or faculty it falls into. So I'll also be involved quite heavily in the student council meetings and with student representatives and the boards of study. So the three of us, if you like, are your constant central feature for higher education at Nescot alongside your programme teams. So I 
need to just emphasize about how quality control works really for higher education. It's a similar framework to further education and schools, but different, different regulatory bodies, if you will. So we have the Office for Students, the OFS, who are the overall regulatory body for higher education. And they sign off institutions such as NESCOT as registered and approved to deliver higher education. And they set out in 2018 quite a lot of um, conditions which need to be met to attain in the first instance and maintain registration status. At the moment, they have the QAA as the quality assurance agency who in effect monitor um, some of the aspects of quality in a similar fashion to the way Ofsted visits schools and further education uh, providers. And the QAA undertake visits and sampling to do that. We also have awarding bodies and the awarding bodies are quite varied. They may include uh, external universities who award degrees because we don't have our own independent degree awarding powers. So at the moment we work with Kingston University, London South Bank University for osteopaths, the Open University for our counselling and our early years and professional practice programmes and later our animal management. Um, and then we also work with West London for our healthcare play specialists. We have the Chartered Institute for Environmental Health as the professional body for the food premises. Uh, we have the General Osteopathic Council for the osteopaths, who is that statutory body there. But we also have Pearson for the higher national qualifications as well. So that's another layer in the checks and balances to ensure that we are operating to those external performance indicators to make sure that you have the experience of commensurate quality with the rest of the nation. And actually we would aspire to be better than that, of course. External examiners come and visit and that's a routine um, sort of interaction across the course of the year. They sign off on assessments, they visit, they discuss with the course teams and they offer that critical friend and also report and um, give actions that we then incorporate into improvement plans that you see and have sight of um, at boards of study. And of course, really key are you, the students, as a means of quality control, which is why the student voice is so crucially important because unless you have conversations with us about what we're doing really well and we can share that if it's operating brilliantly in one area and we can share that good practice to make sure that it, um, it's sort of more apparent across the piece. But equally, if there are things that we need to discuss and try and deal with in the year, that's really important. So rather than waiting to the end of uh, your experience to feed back in what's called the National Student Survey. We would far rather deal with things to improve your time as you're here at that point. We also have peer review and self-assessment um, as policy. So we have quite a lot of external commentary and feedback and internal reflection and criticality feeding what we do to keep us pushing forward and improving standards and your experience. So I'm not going to read these quotes, I'm just going to give you a few moments to have a look at them. These are some extracts from external examiners. Um, and I picked these and the subsequent quotes out because they're areas that we have been doing a lot of work on in terms of driving up practice across the course. Thinking about how our courses are designed, how they are aligned to employability, how industry experts are involved, not only with the assessment and with students so that there's a real currency, but also in terms of making sure that our staff are operating at that top current level. So future-proofing our staff skills. So I've mentioned about the student voice and I thought I would just outline a few key means that uh, you can use to feed in. 
we operate what are called staff student consultative committees. So that is the student representative who is elected to that role in the next few weeks to represent you on the programme. Um, it is not them with their personal views, they are representative of you, the class, um, and they would have a meeting with you as a group in an SSCC, and that would be facilitated by the programme team. Student membership on the boards of study, and that's where we deal with some quality matters, discuss student voice, and we would also have our university representatives there to be involved in that discussion. So that's a really useful piece of external um, involvement. We have course representatives, so those student representatives who chair and steer the SSCCs are elected and take part in the student council um, and take your views there. The student council is a cross college um, meeting where you have representation from the director of IT, health and safety, the LRC, who you'll be meeting a little bit later today, and estates so that we can have those discussions and often um, deal with issues that are brought up there and then so that you can get a really quick response and turnaround. We have several student representative roles that operate at a slightly higher level and Julia will be sending out communications about this so we have nominations once you've taken up your student rep role to become a student governor uh, to attend the HE board and the HE teaching and learning group and participate um, in those. And we will give you support and training around all of that, what it might involve. It's not onerous, but it is a really great thing to have on your CV. And that was certainly one of the positive responses in the most recent national student surveys, the responses that we've seen that although we don't have a student union in the, in, with sabbatical posts in the way that universities do, um, that the sense of community and student voice was really positive. Okay, one thing I did want to mention at this point is the Teaching Excellence Framework, TEF. So currently NESCOT has a bronze award the Teaching Excellence Framework is judged partly on certain metrics, so things such as achievement and retention of students across the duration of programmes, which is called continuation, and ultimately the type of achievement. It's also based on the teaching experience and that assessment and externality that I've already referred to. We're waiting for more guidance from the office for students um, as to what the new TEF will look like. But what we do know is that this time around, they're requesting for a student submission. So we will brief the student reps once they're elected and talk about possible involvement in that as a process, because we would love for that to be the case. Okay. Other ways of gathering your voice are external surveys, which is one of the metrics, strangely, that we are judged upon, both the participation in the NSS, which is final full-time and part-time students, um, but also the overall satisfaction. Graduate outcomes, which is that destination survey 15 months after you finish your programme and then internal surveys such as induction. But alongside that, we also have the less formal um, times. We might drop down to the HE common room and I'll touch on that um, in a second and talk to people just informally. When we visit lessons and undertake learning walks and lesson observations, we would always have discussions with students. So, one of the big things that's happened and we've had to wait a little bit for it to come to fruition is the HE common room which is a social space for students but also it's just been refurbished we've had pods put in and we've got the kettles and the fridge and the microwaves in there 
so that students across the course of the day who travel distances, who stay late, we have certain programmes teaching evenings, have some space which is uniquely theirs. So it is only accessible to HE students. It's accessible using your ID card on the door. It's got sofas and comfortable space but it, and tables that you can sit at, but also study pods. Um, the reason I mention it particularly is because that was designed as a result of student feedback in the first year I was here, which is now four years ago. We've had to wait until this year to put it into practice, in part because of the pandemic situation. In the year following the pandemic, we used the student common room as a teaching area to ensure that we were able to go back face to face where many universities weren't but it allowed us because of the size to operate our larger classes with appropriate social distancing. Okay, so just to emphasize um, student voice, the National Student Survey this year has maintained a positive trend in satisfaction, which is above benchmark. And really just to highlight that the year following the pandemic, we not only bucked the national trend, by improving satisfaction, but we were 17.5 percentage points above the national satisfaction rate, which we were really pleased about. The majority of our responses were in the 90s in terms of satisfaction with things such as teaching. So we felt um, really pleased that students had responded to the fact that we've made severe efforts to get them back on site, involved in face-to-face -face teaching, but in a safe manner following the pandemic. Our strengths are outlined this year are around teaching, feedback, learning opportunities, which is all about the challenge um, that's presented. So not spoon feeding our higher education students, but supporting them to become and that sort of critical evaluative student. Um, and I've emphasised the academic support and the learning communities as well there. Those are all things that we have put quite a lot of effort into in terms of our staff work and CPD and action research projects across the last couple of years. And I referenced that earlier in the external examiner feedback. So that was really pleasing. So some of the comments from students have um spoken about you know the the interest the teaching and learning because that's absolutely at the heart of what we do we want to make it stimulating we want to make it interesting we want to make sure that you have the resources and the tools you need to, to become the graduate that you wish what i wanted to do is just share this quote with you which for me really sums up everything that we would aspire to and I just need a little moment for everybody to read that. Okay. So, nonetheless, I'm talking about all the positives, um, but we obviously we want to do better, and we really need your help to shape the experience in the year and also in future years. And that's hearing about the positive things so that we can make sure that positive things happening for you are shared and are rippled out across so that everybody has that opportunity and learns from each other, but also setting in place improvements for future years, the HE Common Room being a sort of more concrete example. I wanted to mention about the access and participation plan, which is something that we will be visiting in some of our meetings with students. This is a plan that sets out for the Office for Students as one of our registration conditions, how we go about widening participation in higher education. But it's not only about participation or that access point. It's also about making sure that once we have enabled people who maybe don't traditionally consider higher education as an option, or maybe come from uh, a more socially deprived area or are not part of the normal demographic previously. Once we have people on programme that we make sure that everybody, including them, has the tools they need to succeed and the support. 
So this is really referring to what we can do at all points of the student journey to make sure that people access our higher education, they stay on our higher education and succeed. And then after achieving their qualification, they're able to go on to an improved destination, be that a job or starting up their own business. Many of our courses um, are very much aligned to that. Um, or alternatively, taking up further higher education opportunities. So your induction starts today. My presentation with uh, Julia and Naomi is very much about giving you that very broad college-wide overview. You will subsequently have programme inductions, which will involve talking through the course handbook. It will involve a tour of the college when you come on site, and also, crucially, a tour of the website and key policies, and I'll touch on that in a minute. It will also refer to course requirements and assessment. And after that's taken place, you will be asked to complete a hard copy tick sheet called the induction checklist and sign to say that the items on it have been covered off with you both today and in your first week or so at college. So the tutors will be circulating those after they've completed their inductions with you, collecting them back, and then we will be monitoring to ensure that everybody has had an appropriate and thorough induction experience. So the induction will cover academic regulations for your course, website policy, tours, and that includes things such as the academic dishonesty or misconduct, student voice mechanisms, the role of student representatives, I've mentioned the staff student consultative committee, I've mentioned the boards of study, the complaints policy, and health and safety. These are all accessible on the website and that's the definitive area to refer to. Now I just wanted to spend a little bit of time um, highlighting about the academic uh, misconduct because there's been an awful lot of press lately um, about this and so Consequently, I thought it was worth worthwhile thinking, thinking through exactly what that might mean. Actually. So it talks about plagiarism, which in effect is, is cheating. And there's been a lot of press, particularly about essay mills. And what I wanted to highlight is you may not have uh, read that there's been quite a lot of recent reports about students being at risk of not only becoming involved in using SA mills, but also in terms of organised crime and organisations targeting students to provide essays or assessments that can be used in SA mills. And then subsequently, the longer term, lifelong effect of students being involved in those practices related to organised crime. So that's been a big message across the sector to really warn students of the potential impact. It isn't only related to the course, it can have a longer term effect. And I think part of that is around taking responsibility for our own learning, but also taking advice from staff. And I would include Naomi um, in that. And Christina, when she talks you through um, academic skills and information skills in the library session. So that's really important just to bear in mind. So also covered um, is support for students. So you'll be meeting the LRC team initially today just for a very generic overview of how that works. And then subsequently you will have a meeting with Christina to talk through research skills, academic skills, and that's very much aligned to your first assessment. So it's providing you with the skills that you need so that you can practice, get feedback from Christina about how appropriate your referencing and sourcing of databases is for an assessment that you are then due to submit. So it's not a practice without a purpose. And we do that as early as possible in the in the courses. Your teams have already booked their slots. We have 
study skills and employability support. We have uh, a great careers team, Ben and Sandra, who will be involved with you and you will be able to access them at all points through the course. Um, we have financial support, so that's Jackie and Sharon Greenwood, who again are there not, not only for pre-course, but at any point during the course, you can go and have those discussions and request information about hardship funds and bursaries and such like. We have a big centre for health and wellbeing. We have college nurse, we have trained mental health first aiders, we're open on Saturdays and the LRC desk has a trained mental health first aider there during the Saturday. So I know some of you will be coming in on Saturdays and I'll be seeing some of you next week on the 17th. And then we also have what's been created online within Google Classroom, which is the Student Support Hub. And there will be a link to this in your virtual Google Classrooms that go alongside your courses. And that student support hub contains central links so you can go there there will be links to things such as academic skills research skills presentations that you can access independently or tutors may refer you to it's also got links through to the finance page and the finance support team it's got a central link through to the well-being team and safeguarding and all of the resources related to well-being that sit beneath that and so effectively it's a one-stop shop that saves you having to navigate around too much if in doubt go to the student support hub and what you need should be there okay so i think ultimately just for me to finish now and say that we want you to succeed, of course, but actually NESCOT is about more than just that qualification. So we really try to work hard to make sure that we've got all sorts of enhancement opportunities around you attending college and undertaking your course, whether that's factoring in um, business startup um, advice for you, particularly those of you moving into self-employment, or whether it's some of the enrichment activities that occur across the college, so lunchtime yoga and things like that. We just really want to make sure that we're giving you a full and rounded experience. So that's the end of my, my discussion in terms of the um, general presentation. Good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, let me introduce myself. My name's Rob Greening. I'm Director of Personal Development, Behaviour, Welfare, and my colleague. I'm Amy Norris, and I'm Head of Student Wellbeing. And we're here today to talk to you um, about keeping safe at Nescot. So good morning. Um, if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat box and we'll come and answer them at the end. So really glad that you've joined us here at Nescot and hope that you're gonna have a fantastic year, although today is not such a great day. Um, obviously the events that happened yesterday, but we do hope that you uh, enjoy your time at Nescot and importantly that you feel safe while you're studying here um, and that makes a, a, an enjoyable experience. Just bear me a second. The, there we are. So that's who I am. Terrible photograph. Not much better in real life, I'm afraid. Um, but my name is Rob Greening. So what we're going to cover in today's session um, are three things. So why your well-being matters, and it matters um, whether you're a young person, an older person, or quite an older person like me. Well-being does matter to us all. So we're going to talk through factors that can help your well-being, what support is available, and some potential concerns that we just need to make you aware of, um, and any support services and ways that we can help with you. So if we just take a moment, please, and just read that first 
uh, slide. So what is well-being? So I think it's really important, um, particularly the last couple of years have been very uh, trying for everyone um, with the COVID and the pandemic issues. So a state of well-being, as they, the World Health Organization describes it, is, is in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. And Nescot is a community. So the better your well-being, the better you feel about yourself, your course and the college. And so well-being really does matter. So there's a few top tips for well-being and hopefully a lot of you have sort of developed really good habits um, about this um, and practiced these over the last couple of years. But Amy's just going to talk through a couple of top tips for well-being. Um, so just reading the slide, we've got um, connect um at the top so that is um trying to create um social um circles or um have social interactions um making sure that we're not isolated um another um example is um giving so um seeing if there's something that you can do to um kind of create a better environment for those around you um, or for yourself. Um, and by doing good deeds, we tend to feel a little bit better and a little bit more satisfied going to bed at the end of the day. Um, but there are some really great, great ones on the screen. So have to think about them all. Because what um, they often call it is the wells of well-being. So um, there's five common wells of well-being and if you think about a well a physical has got water in it the more that you top up each and every one of those wells the better well-being you have so by being involved with people talking interacting sharing your problems getting help and, and listening to others the more well the your well is fuller we know uh, during lockdown the necessity for physical activity to keep not only your mind but also your body in good shape. During the lockdowns, and, and but it's still important now, is to just be aware of uh, your surroundings, taking time out, whether it's going for a walk, being in your local community. So we're actually connecting with not just the here and now, but it's in, in calm areas to help you find some balance. As Amy said, giving, you know, spending that bit of time listening to somebody else, being a good friend, um, and they in turn will give something back to you. Or it could be volunteering, doing community work. Um, and that can be very small, simple things, tidying up your local community, because that helps you feel good about yourself and where you live. And the final bit is that keep learning, develop new skills, try something new. So you're pushing yourself, you're encouraging yourself, you're feeling as if you're achieving. So those five wells of well-being are really important that we all actively, and it is an active um, and conscious decision that we, we uh, look to strive to have a well-balanced um, life. So how, how can we help should something not quite be going um, to plan? So Amy, would you like to just talk us through what, what help is available? Um, so in the wellbeing team here, uh, we're based in N20, so just around the corner from security. Um, we offer uh, wellbeing sessions um, if that's something that you're interested in. So we would sit with uh, the individuals who engage with us um one meeting um and we can work towards goals set targets um and make sure that we're progressing in terms of 
um, developing better well-being, but we can also um, shed light on uh, what support is also out there in the community. Um, there are lots of great specialist agencies for um, all sorts of reasons. So we can um, signpost and sometimes refer to those, um, highlight what things like apps are available or um, group work uh, sessions that are done in the community as well. Um, so um, there's a range of support. Uh, support. It's, it's very bespoke person-centered support. So it's, it's not going to be a case of one size fits all. Um, but it's it's about what what works for each individual. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you. So it's really important that um, when you come or if you need to use the wellbeing uh, service, we have sadly heard or seen almost everything. Um, so although you yourself might be thinking, oh gosh, how can I go and talk to them? We are a very experienced team. And we help and have helped students of all ages um, with a wide range of issues in the past. So on the screen now, you'll just see some of, some of the issues that we have helped with students in the past year to two years. Um, you know, it, they often say keeping children safe, you should be mindful that it could happen here. We work with the assumption that it does happen here and that we will have students who are experiencing a wide range of issues and we're ready to cater to support those students whatever the issue may be it is really important that when you come and talk to us you do realize it is confidential um, we may need to disclose it could be to the police it could be um, to uh, an ex external agency but we keep it confidential within the safeguarding and wellbeing team. So if you come and talk to us about a concern that you may have, we do not um, share it with your teaching team unless we, uh, through discussion with you, will do so. So it is a confidential service. We can also offer um, additional support. Um, so you could have previously been a looked after child. You may be an unaccompanied asylum seeker. You could be a carer. You could have just come through the youth justice system. Um, we provide additional support. Um, so please come and talk to us. There are a range of additional support and in certain circumstances, financial support available to you. So come and talk to us if you fall into any of those categories. So who are we? Do you want to take us through? Sure. Um, so obviously now you've met um, myself, you've met Rob, um, and then uh, we've got a lovely team of colleagues um, that include Hannah, Stuart and Hayley. Um, and we, um, between the five of us, have a range of different skills, different interests, uh, different experiences and expertise. So um, we try and ensure that um, the individuals who come uh, to us for some support, uh, working with someone who they really have a, um, a good connection with and a good rapport with, um, because that's the first step in, in um, getting that help and getting that support. Um, we also, um, in addition to our team across the college, we have mental health first aiders um, and um, that cohort is ever growing. Um, so uh, all of our faces as mental health first aiders are advertised around the college. So keep, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but it's important, uh, we feel that mental health doesn't start and stop in the wellbeing team, but um, it's, uh, part of the culture here and that's and that's why we've got mental health first aiders um, outside of the wellbeing team as well. Lovely, thank you. So how to contact us? Well there's various ways, um, so obviously in person, in crisis it's the wellbeing centre and as Amy said it's on the North Wing ground floor N20. You can email us safeguarding at nescot.ac.uk we have a direct line telephone number 
And you could also talk to your course leader who will then signpost you or um, inform us um, about a need to engage and talk to you. The key thing is that we are here to help. On the college website, you, and, um, you will be having my day, which you'll find out more about later on, if you haven't already. There are lots and lots of external contacts. So you may not feel that you want to engage with us just at this moment, but could do with finding a little bit of external help to just talk through some of your um, concerns or even just to find out a bit more. So we have um, put onto our website and on your My Day a wide range of resources that you can access, look into, 24-7, 365 days a week. So even when we're not here, it could be midnight, Sunday night, you're having a concern, you know that you can go and find access to information, access to external support lines, um, email addresses or information at the touch of a button. So that's very much around wellbeing and how we can um, support you in these matters. What we do want to just do is to, and we're required to talk around this within higher education, is just to talk about the um, global concern regarding extremism and radicalization. And it's really important that we understand that freedom of speech is really, really paramount. And particularly at the level that you are studying, you're developing your thoughts, your ideas, your ideologies, and we encourage free speech. But you must also understand um, that these must be balanced and well considered. There is a chance that they may become extreme views, leading you to become more interested or involved or groomed, which is radicalized into carrying out illegal activities. And we do monitor and we are required to monitor any um, concerns that we may have about that growing um, radicalization process. So what we've got here is quite generally um, some organizations with the potential and it is always the potential to hold extreme views. So far right, Al-Qaeda, IS, Islamic State, IRA, Animal Liberation Front, Greenpeace, um, anti-capitalism, environmental activism. Some of you might be thinking, well, hang on, those are really legitimate um, uh, organizations. The concern is that a lot of um, legitimate organizations are being infiltrated by extreme groups who are intent on causing disruption. If we think back to some very legitimate protests and rallies that have um, been held in London and the Southeast in particular, where they've been disrupted by um, groups uh, to actually cause detriment to that cause. So we are um, mindful that students are legitimately allowed to voice their opinions and thoughts but we ask people to again exercise some intellectual rigor and question what's what's been discussed so you have a balanced picture because that leads on to um, this act uh, this part here so discussing issues is a natural part of your development and it's how we learn and grow as an individual Discussions are an exchange of ideas and viewpoints. It's an exchange, but it's not a battle to win. So um, Amy and I might discuss something. We have our own viewpoints. We respect one another's viewpoints. The key is that we respect, we say why we differ, but we don't try and beat one another into submission to see, not that I'd ever win, okay? <laughs> So it's about showing that mutual respect and tolerance. We must abide by the laws of this country, okay? Part of, part of which 
is freedom of speech and British values and freedom of expression, of expression. But we must be conscious of those that are within the audience that we're talking to, so we show respect to others. Do you want to add anything else on to that, Amy? Why? I, I think you've covered it. Lovely, thank you. So, um, as part of the country, we do have British values, um, democracy, which is that sharing ideas, taking in turns to share ideas, respecting all ideas and, and working together. We have individual liberty, so freedom for all. So, it's a, a controlled risk have a go while feeling safe, um, but that helps to develop self-esteem and to share feelings. Mutual respect and tolerance. And it's always treat others how you would want to be treated. And everyone is valued, all cultures are celebrated, and we share and respect the opinions of others. And the final part is around that rule of law, understanding rules do matter. So at Nescot, we have very, very few rules. We have um, our community charter, which is very much about um, a set of, of principles by which we want to work um, and coexist with within the, college, uh, within the college. And it's very much about um, respecting one another, looking after ourselves and striving for success, caring for our environment, both inside Nescot and for others. And following the rules, what well, few rules that we actually do have, we ask that they are followed. So British values is, is a very good way that we can all coexist together in a harmonious way. So um, the final bit, which I must need, and I uh, have to make you a requirement of, uh, aware of, I beg your pardon, Every time you log on to our college network, and that includes staff as well as students, we run a software system called Barracuda. Now, Barracuda um, is a web, a web filtering um, device which will block at source certain inappropriate content that we say as an institution, because we do have 16 year olds here, as well as older students, we're not um, permitting anyone to look at that. So it could be um, around pornography, for example. So we will block at source and just not allow people to view that content. Other content we say, okay, um, it could be, for example, if you're studying um, a health and social case, um, health and social care course, you might need to look into historical child abuse um, case studies. So we will allow certain content to be viewed, but we are alerted to the fact that you are accessing that material. And it provides me with a daily report, an hourly report. And so I will can then go and talk to that student talk to that member of staff and say, can you just tell me why you are looking at this material? What a lot of staff tend to do is that they will inform me um, in advance. So for example, public services, um, Rob, we're going to be looking at war crimes. And then at 10 o'clock when everyone starts researching and my computer goes rather strange and, and almost explodes because I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's going on? I'm fully aware of it. So you must all be aware, please, that um, we are monitoring your web and your um, research uh, at all times, and it, so certain items will be blocked. You will need to adhere um, to our IT user policy when accessing um, the system, and that will form part of your on-college induction period. So. Your well-being is really important to us. You've met Amy and myself. We've talked through the range of support that's available. So it is just, it's there for you. So please, if you need help, you need support, talk to your tutor, talk to us in the wellbeing department.
I'm going to hand over now to Graham and Christina to talk you through our wonderful LRC. I'm going to just pop the camera on and hand over. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Graham Hodge, and uh, on my right is Christina. Ruiz de Azua. Um, we're going to tell, talk to you a little bit about the Learning Resources Centre, um, but you will obviously be attending full sessions uh, in the weeks to come. Um, so, can we move on? Next slide. so this is our team at the moment. So you've got myself there, Graham, as head of Learning Resources, and Christina up there is the academic librarian. Together, the two of us bring over um, we think we worked out over 50 years experience uh, working in, in academic libraries. Um, so we hope that some of that will rub off on yourselves and you'll be able to benefit from our, our knowledge over the years. Um, we currently have a vacancy for an HE academic support mentor that's going to be joining the team. We're going to be interviewing next week and we're hopeful of actually being able to appoint someone. And this person will work very closely with Christina and the e-learning development officer to offer you the skills that you'll need in terms of academic support, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, being able to find the information that we provide and also have the digital skills to be able to actually access the <coughs> systems that we offer. Um, also on that top row is Haley, Haley, who is an information literacy skills advisor, and she works very closely with Christina to actually deliver our information skills to you directly. We have one vacancy for an assistant librarian. Um, again, we hope to be interviewing shortly for that post. On the bottom row, you've got Claire, who is my senior LRC assistant, Denise Murphy, who is an LRC administrator, and Lucy Hamilton, who is an LRC assistant, but also helps um, and uh, arranges student enrichment activities. So that's our team. So what facilities and services can we offer you? Well, we have two desks in the Learning Resources Centre, a welcome desk and a help desk. So the welcome desk is where you come into, into the LRC. That's where you will go when you want to borrow any items from us. That's where you'll go when you wish to, to return them. All students at NASCAR are able to borrow up to 10 items at any particular time. Um, that could be uh, mostly books, but there are DVDs that students can borrow as well. Our standard loan length for a book is three weeks, but we have shorter loan items as well of one week and 24 hours at a time. Um, we also do basic level of inquiry work at the welcome desk, um, but if you have anything that's been more detailed or we need to sit down with you and, and do some stuff, that's where you'll come to the help desk, which is situated in a prominent position on the ground floor of the LRC, and that's where we're based there. We have approximately 100 PCs and laptops uh, in the, in the uh, LRC. Uh, they're, they're arranged in different areas. And of course, you're able to bring in your own devices if you want, because there's Wi-Fi throughout the whole college, including the LRC. And so if you want to use your own device to access the college's internet, please feel free to do so. In the, we have a dedicated room for our higher education students. It's the HE zone there in the orange wall that you can see. And that's for only students who are adult learners, so that's over 19, or for students like yourselves on HE programmes. And the facilities there are fairly informal. Uh, you can work to collaboratively with your colleagues, or you can work on your own. We don't insist upon silence in that area, but we would expect you to work quietly uh, with other students so that you're not disturbing those that are trying to work on their own. We have photocopying and printing facilities, um, again, in, in the Learning Resources Centre. Um, you can send uh, your printing jobs from any of our devices to the photocopiers. Unfortunately, at the moment, you can't print from your own device, so you'd have to book one of ours. Um, and then and you can have your work in the cloud uh, or directly send it to the printer and photocopier. And we have black and white printing and colour printing. And you are given an allowance towards printing um, every month. It's only a small allowance of 50 pence towards your printing and copying. But um, if you don't use it, it, it doesn't get taken away. It gets added to the next month. And if you do use up your um, photocopying printing allowance, you can top it up either at the welcome desk or the help desk. 
and it's currently and has been for a long, long time, four pence uh, a sheet for black and white and 10 pence a sheet for color. So that's really a quick whirlwind stop of our, our facilities. Um, so we'll now move to the next slide. And I'm gonna pass you over to Christina now, who's gonna talk a little bit about the different uh, resources that we actually have. So <clears throat> we, has a, we have a, a collection of books and electronic books. Uh, can you remember how many? We've probably got around about 20,000 um, printed books and about 2,000, 2,500 electronic books. So you will have access to all these resources as well as a reading list, electronic journals and databases uh, through an online portal that we have created. So I'm going to click here and very quickly show you our online portal. <clears throat> Right, so this is the home page. You will have access to this portal from your Google Classroom. Um, and this is where uh, basically you can search for everything. Uh, at the top bar is where uh, you can find all the books and ebooks that we have in the LRC. Uh, we have this LRC virtual tour if you want to have a look. Um, then basic information about the opening times, contact information. Every month we publish here uh, all the books that we have bought. And then on the left hand side, we have all the sections that we teach uh, at Nescot. So let's say, for example, if I click on uh, sports, these are all the courses that have a section in this uh, LRC online portal. I, I click on the HNC, HND Sports and Exercise Science course. Uh, this is where you have all your reading lists uh, by units and by year. So if you click on any of these uh, units, it will take you to the list of books and ebooks that we have in the library uh, related to that specific unit. Okay, so it's a very easy way for you to access these resources. Some of these uh, resources are going to be electronic, like this one. Uh, it says here, electronic resource, read this ebook. So you just need to click there and the ebook will open for you. All the resources will be uh, traditional print books like this one. Uh, so you just need to check where about in the library this book is located, okay? So once you click in the book, you have this classification number here, and that is where the book is. That's what helps you to find the book. But I'm going to explain all of this in detail in this uh, information literacy skills sessions that we're going to run with every course at the beginning of the term. Um, apart from reading lists, um, apart from the books that are linked to the units, if you click on the document, you will see the same list of resources, but in Harvard reference system. So this is more similar to what uh, you probably know uh, is, a, is a reading list or a reference list, okay? So this follows the system that we follow at Nescot, which is Harvard reference system, and it can help you to, to understand and to learn how to reference uh, resources uh, for, for, your, for your assignments, for your essays. Uh, we also have included the links here to each resource. So everything is to facilitate your, your access to all, all the resources. So um, as well as this, we have um, access to a, a, the platform for the databases. On databases, you will get uh, lots of journals, uh, art, um, uh, articles, okay, so you have, you can search there as well. You have access to individual databases, uh, all the resources, video platform, encyclopedia, uh, and then each course might have a specific uh, resources. Uh, this one, for example, is about anatomy. Uh, these subject numbers are the numbers uh, where you can find those subjects in the library and then useful websites, 
Okay, so every, this is like a standard course. Every single course will have a space here with a specific resources. We also have uh, a resource on uh, which will uh, help you to cite and reference your sources and we create a specific uh, referencing guide per course as well. So <clears throat> again, uh, this is going to be explained in depth uh, in our uh, information literacy sessions. Uh, these sessions are already arranged between your lecturers and myself so you don't need to do anything uh, about that. Uh, we, you will probably come to the LRC and we have a classroom there where I will deliver two sessions. One, to explain how to search, how to find all these resources, how to find information for your assignments. And the other one will be uh, for you to learn how to reference those resources. Um, you also have, uh, once you are an expert student, you will also have your uh, Office account, Office 365 account, so you can enjoy, you, you can use, sorry, um, all the Office 365 part, so you have access to Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, Outlook, and, and the whole, uh, all the applications. And you're able to work with these in the cloud? if you wish, or you can actually download these to your own device as well. So that, that's entirely up to you. But it's actually very straightforward to use both. Um, and if you have any difficulties at all, then come down to the help desk uh, or contact the help desk and we will help you to access Office 365, which will be part of your college email address as well. Mm -hmm. And then, and then lastly, again, we've already touched on it at the beginning of, of our presentation, but study skills support. We know that many of you will be returning to higher education after a significant gap. Um, and, it's, and it's a mixture of excitement and nervousness. Um, totally understand that. I think we get excited and nervous at the start of each academic year. So it, it's quite, you know, it's, it's obvious, it's, it's a thing that we, we share in common with you. And that's why it's crucial that we have a member of staff in that's going to support you and help you understand about, about what is academic reading, what is um, academic writing, how to structure an essay, etc. So this person, when we appoint them, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, will be able to support you throughout the course of your, not only just at the beginning, but throughout the whole time that you're here with NESCOT. Um, as I mentioned this before, uh, we have created a virtual tour. Uh, I can very quickly show you, if you are new to NESCO, show you the LRC. Uh, so this is the main entrance. We don't have many rules in the LRC, but we will ask you to please uh, be respectful, not bring any food and, and this kind of um, uh, ba ba basic uh, rules. So this is a welcome desk that Ryan explained before, the help desk. You will probably see Ryan in the help desk most of the days. Uh, we have a big area of tables where you can uh, have a look at the books, study in group. We have different areas for computers. Uh, behind the help desk is, is the zone A. B is a big area in the middle and C is at the back. We have toilet facilities in that corner. Uh, printer facility, printing facilities are here. So we have three printers, black and white, these two, and this one is in color. We have retrography here at the back if uh, you need a um, different kind of printing work. So in there, for example, they do posters. So many of you on your course will have to do uh, a poster up to A1 size. So if you want to get it professionally printed um, after you've done all your work on it, you can take it to Donna uh, in, in Repography and she will print it for you. Obviously it does cost, um, but it will look absolutely fantastic if you get it done in there. This little room here is just next to, this This is the main door. So next to the main door is uh, where we want to allocate this uh, uh, academic skills tutor. So it's next to, it's easy to access. Uh, I'm just quickly going to show you uh, where, 
uh, our offices are. So this is, uh, I share this office with Brian. This is the fire exit, and this is the classroom I mentioned before. This is where we will deliver this uh, academic skills program. So as you can see, books are uh, everywhere. We have different sections. We will show you where the books are uh, when you visit the library for the first time. This is the HT classroom. This is what Ryan was uh, mentioning before. It's a flexible space. It's, it's comfortable and nice. Uh, you can use our pieces here. So we have two there and uh, four, eight, uh, ten more here. You can bring your own laptops that you can connect. And we have some comfortable sofas and uh, sofa spaces. Um, well, basically, that's, that's the virtual tour. Hopefully, you will come and visit us uh, next week. We, um, together, Christine and I, we think that we offer you a university level of service, but we can offer you the intimacy that you won't get from a large university library. We'll get to know you personally, you'll get to know us personally, and we'll build up a really good relationship. We'll understand what you're interested in, what needs you are. Sometimes you'll give us feedback and say, Graham, that was that, that was really useful, but we need some more books on this area. Or I've come across this really fantastic book that you don't have in the library. And then you can recommend things to us. And that's something that you probably wouldn't get if you went to a much larger institution. So that's something that we're really proud of is our relationship with our students. And it comes out year after year in the national survey that we do, but also in our local surveys. So lastly, just some information then. So our opening times are Monday to Friday. We open up every morning at 8.30 in the morning before lessons start. And we do late nights till seven o'clock um, on M Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, at Friday at the moment that we're closing at five, um, that may be extended in the future. And weekends, we plan at some point in the start of the academic year to start opening nine to five at weekends. Uh, we college also, uh, LRC also stays open during college holidays. So at half term, we'll be open in October. At the end of October, we'll be open from nine to four each day. Christmas, the whole college tends to close and that includes the LRC, but we'll be open at Easter and during the summer from nine to four. We have telephone numbers there. So it's uh, our inquiry desk is 3055 and our renewals desk is 31775. And as I said, the, the online portal is really useful, what Christina showed you, and that's the simple um, ad address there. So ipac.nescot.ac.uk. But again, you'll, you'll be you know, pointed to that during the sessions that you do with Christina. And if you do wish to follow this up in any way, feel free to email Christina or myself. There's our email addresses there. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, I was only going to chip in an echo, not only to Christina and Graham and the rest of the LRC team work extremely closely with your students. I think the big distinguishing factor is the fact that actually they are an integral part of your course team. They work alongside, they are part of the teaching and learning group, they contribute to projects, they contribute to CPD for staff, as well as for student development. And that is really critical. And that is testament to what's driven up the standards and the positive responses we've had that Graham and Christina have possibly mentioned, but maybe undersold. Um, and if I can just say in all of the validations that we've had this last year, the LRC was one of the commendations, the work they do and close links with the course teams and the students was commended. Um, and really part of that is this newly modelled role, which is the academic support mentor, who is part of that support team, but not instead of your course team. So study skills and academic skills will form modules on many of your programs and this is that additional supplementary layer of support working with staff in the same way that Graham and Christina do as well as working with you so you've got many layers and many avenues to sort of go to so yeah. 
No, listen, and, and, and the reason why, for example, when Christina demonstrated the reading lists, so we like to refer to them as dynamic reading lists because you can click on them and it takes you straight to the catalogue. And if we've got an ebook, it takes you straight to the ebook. The reason that they that they work so well is because of our constant liaison and updating and interaction with your teaching teams. Um, and so that they reflect exactly exactly that, that, that we are fully integrated uh, as part of the teaching team. And as that, we, we look forward to providing the support that we can, that will make you, you know, a success while you're at the college, but also it makes it an enjoyable time for you to study as well.